Hi and welcome to the Windows Kernel Programming Fundamentals course here on Pentester Academy. My name is Pavel and I'll be your guide throughout this course. Once we have a driver ready enough for testing, we can go ahead and install the driver and then test it out in whatever way is relevant for that particular type of driver. And so for general drivers, we can use an INF file for installations. However, for software drivers like the ones we're writing in this course, it is not really needed. In fact, doesn't really have any added benefit. And so that's why we actually removed and deleted that INF file that was created for us by the project template. Instead, we're going to install the driver in the same way that services are installed using the create service API from user mode. However, we won't be using the Create Service API directly by writing code. Instead, we'll be using a tool that can do this exact same thing. And one of the most common tools for these uh, kinds of purposes is SC, for short for Service Control. And so this tool allows us to install, uninstall, and do some other stuff in terms of uh, drivers and services. And the second thing we have to do for the machine we're actually testing on is to put the machine in a test signing mode uh, because our driver is not going to be signed because we're currently just developing it. And even if we do have a proper certificate to sign the driver, we typically don't do that while developing the driver. And so we need to put the target system in something called test signing mode where we can install unsigned drivers. And so the way to do that is to open a command window with admin privileges and issue the command bcd edit slash set test signing on and then restart the system. We have to do that just once. Do know that if, you, if the appropriate system, the target system uses secure boot, then secure boot protects against making that change. So you must test your driver unsigned driver on a system that doesn't have secure boot uh, enabled. And for a virtual machine, that's fairly easy to do. If it's uh, on your own machine, then of course it may be a bit difficult. You maybe have some uh, policies in place if you are in some uh, organization or enterprise uh, company. So let's see how we can install and test our very simple driver at this point. So let's go back to Visual Studio. So we have our driver here. And if I go ahead and uh, open a process, uh, sorry, um, Windows Explorer to see what's going on within the file system. So this is what we'll find. We'll see there's an x64 directory here. And here we will see debug. And then we can see here the sys file. So that's our uh, driver that we want to uh, install and then test. And so the first thing we need to do is to install that using the sc command. So let's see how that's done. So I have an administrator's command window open here. I'm going to use the sc create uh, option, which is calling create service behind the covers to install a service or a driver. So I need to give the driver or service a name, and that name is going to be the key in the registry where it's installed. So let's call that uh, proc power. So I can give it any name that I want, it, as long as it doesn't uh, uh, collide with an existing key within the registry, which I'll show you uh, in a moment. And then by default, this command assumes I'm going to install a service. So I need to tell it I actually need to install a driver. That's done using the type equals kernel option. Notice, by the way, that the equal sign must be exactly after type, and then there must be one space, and then the name kernel. So this is kind of a picky thing that this SC uh, tool uh, requires. And the second uh, thing that I must uh, use here is point to the binary of my driver. So it's going to do that using the bin path uh, equals option. And so I can, if I want to just go ahead and uh, copy that path or navigate to that in some way, let me copy that and then just add the file itself that's going to be a process a power dot sys. This is my driver binary. And once I execute that, it says create service success, which means the driver is installed. It's not yet loaded, it's just installed. So to make sure, I can go ahead and open the registry editor. So here I have my registry editor open, and what I expect to find is 
registration for this driver under the same keyword services are registered and this is in fact the same path we get in the registry path parameter in driver entry so that's going to be HK local machine because the driver is a system level thing then we have system current control set services and this list is actually a list of services and drivers so if you look for proc power we should be able to find that so here's proc power so this is our driver installed right now so you can see the image path here points to exactly where we put our driver right now now in more common cases we're going to typically install the driver in a different directory it's going to be the system32 drivers directory where it's better protected but for demonstration purposes that's going to be good enough and we can put the driver technically anywhere uh, in the file system so proc power is here so how do we distinguish between kernel drivers and services so this is done using this uh, type value and this type value if it's a small number like one or two that means kernel driver if it's a 10 hex or 20 hex this means a user mode service so this is a driver here's the driver for process explorer which is also of course uh, a driver and for process monitor it's actually also a driver but it actually is registered in a very uh, weird way and so it's not showing all the features right here because it's not actually loaded and we can go ahead and look at other entries here so for example this thing is actually a service because the type is 10 hex and if you look at the services applet in the control panel what that applet actually does it uh, enumerates all the keys under this uh, services sub key and only uh, extracts information from those which have a type that indicates that it's a service however this same list holds services and device drivers so do note these are very different entities a user mode service is running well in user mode a kernel driver runs in kernel mode so they're completely different entities however they're managed in the same repository and in fact the service control manager which is responsible for starting and stopping services for instance can also load software drivers and so this is in fact what we're going to do in order to load our own driver the other parameter I want to mention at this point, let me go back to proc power here, is this uh, start value. And the start value indicates when should that driver load up. And so the value of 3 that you see here means on demand or manually, which means that when we restart a system, that driver is not going to be loaded automatically. We'll have to issue a specific command to load that, which we'll do in the moment. It is possible to have a value such as 2 or 1 which will make the driver load automatically when the system starts up so we can have that driver loaded already without the need to uh, manually load it and so in some types of drivers this is actually very useful but for now we're going to use the manual approach and so the driver is loaded correctly and so now I need to actually start it and to start it means the driver is going to be loaded into system space and the driver entry function called. And so before I do that, because I want to see all the various outputs I set up uh, using KD print in the code, I'm going to launch the sysinternals tool I mentioned called debug view. So this is it. This is part of the sysinternals uh, suite of tools. So you can download that. It's a free download and you have to run debug view as admin for this purpose and then you can go to the capture menu and you can see that it can capture output from user mode applications as well from user mode processes i'm going to uh, disable that i haven't enabled that uh, here because i don't care about user mode right now but i do need to enable capture kernel which is not enabled by default and then you also want to enable verbose kernel output this allows us to see dbg print and and those outputs without setting a specific value in the registry which is today needed to see these kinds of outputs for example in a debugger so the best option is just to request this particular option which makes uh, debug view actually it has uh, its own driver to intercept or to hook all these functions within the kernel and then just go ahead and output them to this particular view so once i have this in place i can also 
uh, if I wanted to to make it this always on top so I can see that at all times I can go ahead and start my driver now at this point I'm testing my driver on my own machine which is something you really shouldn't do in more complex cases but I'm fairly confident that the driver will not uh, blue screen the system in this case so I'm going to test that on my machine However, later on in the next module, I'll show you how to test a driver properly on a different machine, which is going to be a, a virtual machine. So SC start loads a driver or a service given its name as it is in the registry. So in this case, it's going to be proc power in our case. And now I'm going to click uh, hit enter. And so you can see here that the driver is running, uh, whatever that may mean. It means that the uh, the image binary is loaded into system space which we'll see that in a moment we can see this output here this is the driver entry output i uh, set up and here's the registry path notice it actually points to the same registry key however the path itself look, looks a bit different because it's in the way the kernel sees the registry so the kernel sees the registry is starting with a root called registry and then machine is really HK local machine as we see that from user mode and then system and then current control set which we uh, typically use here so this is a current control set let me go back uh, to that uh, parent key uh, maybe a bit quicker in any case we can see it calls it's it's called current control set but really this is a symbolic link to control set 001 and I want to describe right now why do we have this indirection but we do and so that's why it shows the real key and not the symbolic link and so it points to services and then proc power which is the name that we provided to our driver and we've seen that in the registry so the driver is up how can we actually make sure we can go ahead and run a tool such as Process Explorer. So Process Explorer can show us what's going on within system space. So if you go to the system process, we'll see the various drivers that are currently loaded into the system uh, process, which means loaded into the kernel. And so remember that we have two views here in Process Explorer. So if you see handles, uh, then just go ahead and switch uh, to uh, looking at uh, modules. So I'm going to press that button again and so here we can see all the drivers currently loading into the system including by the way the kernel itself so the kernel itself is also we can think of that as a kernel module or a driver and so here's the kernel itself ntrskernel.exe so our own driver is supposed to be called a uh, process power so let's see here it is process power.sys is part of system space we can see that it's loaded in some kernel address we can see the path to the driver which is exactly the path that we specified so it kind of makes sense so the driver is up so at this point the driver is not uh, very interesting um, because we apparently have uh, a small bug and the bug here is that uh, notice we're getting the RTL uh, using RTL get version we're getting the version but really we're not printing that at all so we're not going to see anything we know that it actually succeeded but that's perhaps not good enough so we need to unload the driver, make the fixes to the code, and then reload it again. Notice we don't actually have to reinstall it, only unload and load. So let's see what that looks like. So again, I want to look at the output because I know that for the unload routine, I should see something. So I'm going to use the sc stop command, which is calling the control service API behind the covers with the uh, command to stop the particular service or driver. So I'm going to use proc power here and let's see what happens and so it uh, now is now stopped we can see we get the KD print output from our unload routine and we can go back to process explorer and see that uh, our power uh, process power binary is gone so it's unloaded from the system so we can make changes to it so let's go let's go ahead and fix our driver so what we need to do here is just add another KD print and give some information about the Windows uh, version. So I'm going to use a percent %u for a D word value, a 32-bit unsigned value. Let's use another one and another one because we're going to show the major version number, the minor version number, and the build number. So these are available in the VI structure we defined here. So here's the major function, sorry, the major uh, version of Windows, here's the minor version of Windows, 
and we have here a build number so just let's just uh, grab all of them and uh, print them out so let's build this again so it built successfully so all I need to do now is just start the driver again there's nothing else to do I don't need to install that because it's already installed it's just a matter of loading the binary calling driver entry yet again so let's do that and watch the output so now we get the same first lines of course this is unchanged but now we get the version of Windows on my system this is the version I'm using uh, right now so our driver works and we again can verify that our binary is here and it's loaded into system space mm -hmm.